And I'm going to move into another space here, <clears throat> which is uh, the second watch. Okay. The second watch. All right. Okay. Now, as I have explained, some of you just got on recently about the first watch and all the things there. And I explained Ezekiel 22, 30. Uh, it says, I sought for man to send the gap to make up the hedge, that one of the main purposes for the intercessor is to stand there in the gap, to be one that go between two worlds, okay, between the material world and the spiritual world. And he says that destruction would not come upon the land. And so as an intercessor, especially a prophetic intercessor, one that is seeing, and I want you to all uh, evolve to that space because you can. Now, as I oftentimes say, uh, all prophets are intercessors, but not all intercessors are prophets. So just because you see or you have a vision or you have a dream, it doesn't mean that you're called to the office of a prophet. It could mean that. But just so that you understand, there is the gift of prophecy and then there is the office of the prophet. But you as an intercessor have the ability to tap into the prophetic sciences in a way because you are crucifying the flesh in a sense by prayer. Did you hear what I'm saying? Prayer is one way of crucifying the flesh. What do you mean crucifying the flesh? When you are praying about other people and things in your world situation, your family, your, your religious group, your church or whatever it is, that is a very selfless act. And so that is taking the attention off of you, the ego, and it is putting the attention on other people. And that is one way of sacrifice or crucifying your flesh, bringing it under subjection, because now your focus is on others outside of you. And as you do that, that which you make happen for others will happen for you. That which you make happen for others will happen for you. Now, there are some people, they are not at a space where they can pray, right? They, they just don't, they, they're just not there. Or maybe they're going through a challenging time, you know, where they're just overwhelmed by life, you know, and the situations and they just can't pray. And so this is the time where you have to be one of those four crazy friends. I mean, remember, I did a message on the four crazy friends, okay? Remember, I believe it's in Mark chapter 2 here, and it speaks about this. It speaks about the paralyzed man, okay? And he was there in Capernaum, and uh, Capernaum, yeah, right. And so, and, uh, and so his four friends had a uh, thought, a crazy thought. That's why they're crazy, right? And so, and they had this thought. They had to get their friend before Jesus. But he could not come on his own because he was paralyzed. There are some people who are paralyzed spiritually, paralyzed emotionally, financially, okay, maybe physically or, or in their mental state. You know, they, they just can't move. They're just stuck and they, they, they really want to. They really want to. But because of the events that's happened to their life that has traumatized them and in some areas they're paralyzed and so you need people in your life that care enough about you that can bring you before jesus when you can't come before yourself somebody need to shout amen to that somebody need to shout amen to that sometimes you may go through things that that you know even sometimes you can't even tell nobody about but the prophetic intercessor will pick up on it in the spirit and may not know exactly what it is to pray about, but will pray. And if it is not verbalized in the native tongue, it will be verbalized in the angelic tongue, in the speaking in tongues and stuff as you're praying. And so these four guys devise a plan. We got to get our friend to Jesus because we know that if we can just bring him into that space, that something is going to happen. How many believe that you got people in your life and they're all messed up and they're crippled, paralyzed by drug addiction, alcohol addiction, sex addiction, food addictions, all kinds of things, pride, anger, hate, religion or whatever but if you can just get them into an experience with the most high 
everything will be all right. Everything will be all right. They had enough faith if we could do it. So they got there a little bit late and the house was filled. It was probably maybe Peter's house. We'll just say it was Peter's house. It wasn't a big, huge house, right? And you know that the, the ceilings were not like we have these beautiful ceilings out here in the Southwest, these Spanish tile roof. I love that, right? It wasn't like that, you know, or it wasn't the shingles or whatever that, that some people have, but it, it was, uh, you know, it was, it was maybe straw and maybe a little brick or something. I don't know what it was, but it wasn't that well done you know, for the most uh, houses, okay, unless you were very rich. So, but they said, we got to find a way to get our friend to Yeshua. We got to find a way. And so they said, look, there's a ladder over there. You need crazy people in your life. You need people with vision. You need people with insight. You need people that will go and do whatever it takes to keep you on the straight and, straight and narrow. And sometimes you have to get up in people's face. Sometimes you have to make it real. And what did Paul say? Have I become your friend? Have I become your enemy because I told you the truth? <laughs> you have to tell people the truth and make it plain because sometimes there is so much thickness there and just the things that they've allowed to deal with uh, in, in their mind and gone through in their life and stuff. And so you sometimes have to really make it real uh, to them and be very straightforward and hurt their feelings. <laughs> I find myself in that situation many times. And Apostle Paul says, have I become your enemy because I told you to do? And so you got to have these people. You got to have someone that has vision, someone that's going to tell you the truth, even though you don't like it. So someone that's going to have faith for you and someone that believes in you, right? You got these. So somebody said, there's a ladder over there. What are we going to do with the ladder? Let's just horse him up. Oh, there's a rope over there. And let's climb up on the rooftop. Whose house is this? I don't know. It doesn't matter. But we got to get him before Jesus. <laughs> and you know the story. They begin to tear up the roof and they let him down. Jesus is still preaching. I mean, he's yet there now as if nothing. He knows what's going on. But And the people wonder, what's going on here? And all at once they see the stretcher down there. And he turns to the guy and says, son, your sins are forgiven you. <laughs> And those religious folks, who does he think he is to, to forgive sins? Who does he think he is? And he reading their hearts and stuff. What is it easier to say? Rise, take up your bed and walk or forgive your sin. Your sin, sins are forgiven. He said, that you may know that the Son of Man have power on earth to forgive sins. I say to you, rise, take up your bed and walk. And the paralyzed guy got up, got up. So what I'm showing you here is that this second watch here and all of these watches uh, you could be that paralyzed person or maybe, you know, where people are praying for you and bringing you into that presence. OK, when you can't get there yourself or maybe you are assigned to pray for someone that can't get there themselves. Their lifestyle may be horrible, bad, destructive or whatever, but you are assigned to pray for them. And that's what he says. I, I uh, He says, <laughs> I sought for a man, a woman, a child or whoever to stand in the gap to make up the hedge so somebody won't OD, so somebody won't end their life, so someone won't commit suicide, so someone won't make a wreck of their life again, okay? So, you know, he says, I'm looking for someone that is willing to do that, that can speak the truth in love and that will pray, all right? You got what I'm saying here. And so he says, I didn't find him. So you know the story in the book of Ezekiel, judgment came, judgment came because there was not this. So there was an imbalance. There was an imbalance where evil outweighed the good, darkness outweighed the light, okay? So it's about keeping the balances. So the second watch here, I'm gonna show you something here uh, in Isaiah 21. I hope you guys getting this, hope it's making sense to you as it, it to me, I've been moving in this, the last several days, and especially this morning. Uh, Isaiah 21, look, what, look here, it says this. For thus says Yahweh, for thus says Yahweh unto me, go set a watchman and let him declare what he see. Ooh, 
can you hear what the rock is cooking? Can you smell what the rock is cooking? The rock of ages. He says, I want watchmen. I want set watchmen. I want people to move into their space, into their place. As we said the other day, when we first started these uh, the day sessions about three years ago, uh, a little over three years ago and stuff, uh, we had developed a system and that system is still in place where uh, I believe if you go to the Telegram group, you can find uh, where all of those pin messages are. You'll find some of the, the watch times and prayer times. And if you are kind of new uh, to this and to our Telegram group and stuff, you can find a time. And so we're dealing with this second watch. Find one of those time slots. And uh, I was talking to Mama Winifred the other day. And so, and she says that she is yet doing hers from all that three years ago and hers is the fourth watch and she yet gets up and prays uh, throughout that whole time that three hour period and so that's powerful you know and so I can't say that I've done it all the time okay <laughs> but kudos to those of you that have I'm gonna do better I'm gonna do better okay so now the second watch here look what he says he says uh you know I, I need a watchman I need a person that can be in this position you don't have to have an, a title you don't have to be a bishop or apostle or prophet, evangelist, pastor, teacher, deacon, usher, or any, a guru or a rabbi or anything like that. All you have to have is some love in your heart for people and love for the most high God. Because as I said, praying is a selfless act. You have to have enough love uh, to pray, to really pray for people. I'm not talking about the prayer. Oh God, just bless everyone. You know, it's okay. You know, we, we sometimes do those prayers on the fly, right? But I'm talking when you're really praying and interceding sometimes for, or for people that are in trouble and they don't know what's going on. And so he says, I want you to uh, set a watchman and let him declare what he sees. So a watchman, your job in this second watchman watch here is to declare what you see is to declare what you see now remember this this first watch yes you're yet seeing things and we talked about the different times and that there are angels of the hours that are coming with their scrolls and they unroll their scrolls and showing what is going to be happening during this hour in your world and in the world at large and stuff and as you're in your position as a watchman which is in a high place high state of consciousness. Sometimes you're able to peer into that scroll and you can see what is, uh, uh, what is on the agenda, what may be happening. Okay, say this is the second watch starting at 9 p.m. You can see what may be scheduled to happen around 11 p.m., 9.30, 12, okay, because it is there. And you can pray and you can intercept that. That's where intercession come in. From, comes from okay you're intercepting something some of you know about football and all of that and you know you have you intercept that pass okay that could have been a touchdown for the opposing side but because you were in position and watching you were able to intercept that sometimes you have to knock the person down <laughs> sometimes you just jump right up in front of them and grab it right out the air <laughs> and take it and run it right down the field in the opposite direction. Do you understand what I'm saying? Because there are some decrees and some things that have been uh, 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 released that are in motion to happen. Could be with the job, could be with the family, could be with the house, could be with your career, could be with your education, it could be with your body. And so you see it in the spirit and you grab it out of the air, as it were, and you run it back. You run it back. Somebody need to be shouting, run it back run it back. <laughs> you run it back. Okay. You don't allow that to happen because your prayer is an intercession and it's in intercepting that. So he says, watchmen, what you see, you declare it. So in this second watch, it is about uh, developing your spiritual insight, your third eye, because you are a watchman, right? You're watching and at this time 9 p.m to 12 p.m is really dark out it's really dark out okay and so which is also a metaphor for uh the the you know figurative for the the dark times in our lives or, or on the planet here and stuff and so you, that means that you have to really make sure that you see what you see okay they didn't have people on the wall that were blind they didn't have people on the wall that were weak eyed especially at night okay but they had people on the wall that were sharp because the enemy could come lurking at the night and they had to be careful and the enemy many times was camouflaged and you couldn't really see 
okay, because of the darkness of the night. And so you had to be very sharp to know. And so it's what you see declare. And so in this second uh, um, watch, it is what the spirit is revealing to you. And he says, whatever you see, say it, you say it. So what, what do you mean? So now you're using your voice. You're using your voice. Remember in the first watch, you're in a place of meditation. You're in a place of prayer also and stuff, but it's more so meditation, visualization and all of this. But now in the second watch, you're amping it up. And because of this voice activated technology, this world that we live in that is activated by the frequency that comes out of your mouth, you are speaking things. You are decreeing things. You're declaring things. And this whole realm has gotten amped up because see the third watch is coming and that is the most active hour in the spirit realm of the watches and so the second watch you're preparing the first watch you've already been in that state of meditation and and prayer and uh healing and all those wonderful things now he says what you see i want you to declare it i want you to speak it forth okay because the power of life and death that's in your tongue what do you mean Anything that you see that has been written against you, if you got some kind of medical report and it says there's diabetes, there's heart problems, there's this, there's that, there's brain, there's kidney, there's whatever, take that report and look at it and reverse it. Can you hear what I'm saying? If your medical report says you have a heart condition, you speak that and says, in the name of Yeshua, I reverse this and I see that my heart is whole. My heart is healed. My heart is fine. Let not your heart be troubled. If that medical report says there's cancer, I reverse that. I see, I see, I see that I'm healed. I'm whole. There are no cancer cells. They're arrested. The tumors must dissolve. They must dry up and die. They must come out of my blood. Uh, uh, the medical report say, may say that, that you're suffering from anxiety and uh, uh, fear and stuff. And so you have to reverse that and you have to say what you see because you are a watchman. And if you're only seeing what the report says, you know, you're not going to get a change. You're not going to see. You're not going to see things change. So you going to have to see beyond what the reports say for your life and stuff. If your bank account saying that, oh, it's overdrawn, it's, it's negative or whatever like that, you're going to have to pick up that paper and say, I command this bank account to be in the positive and you begin to speak in it whatever you are seeing because you're in the second watch and you're changing the atmosphere because the third watch is about to come and it's going to be very, very active and stuff. And if you don't know who you are, if you haven't done what you need to do, you might become a victim of that third watch okay <laughs> do you understand what i'm saying here i hope you guys are getting this Whew, glory to god all right so it's a battle that takes place it's a battle with the words what happened with yeshua matthew chapter 4 the devil came to him satan came to him when he was hungry right if you be the son of god turn these stones into bread did Yeshua just sit there and says, you know, forget about you? No, he engaged that entity. It is written, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. So he countered that with something opposite of what was spoken. So this third watch is about using your words to counter everything that's been uh, launched against you, your physical body, your family, your kids, your grandkids, your business, your home, and all of those things here is about using your word, is about using that frequency to change the atmosphere because you are set on patrol as a watchman and you're watching over the things in the spirit realm. As I read to you, uh, Revelations, I believe 9, 15, it says that an angel will was sent for the hour. So there are angels that are being sent for the hour. There are angels that are sent for the second watch, 9 p.m. through 12 uh, a.m. that are there. And on, on the other side, there are what you could call what the Bible calls evil angels from the presence of the Lord. That's what your Bible says that are sent. Why? 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 Because you live in a world of duality. You live, it's just this part of the cosmos. I don't know what it is. In the beginning, God created the heaven, earth. There is land, sea. There is darkness, 
light, there is male, there is female, there's good, there's evil. So we're in this state of duality until we come to the singularity, until all become one. And that's what Yeshua prayed for, remember? That they may be one, okay? That everything comes into the singularity, into the unity. But for right now, as we're physically attached to this three-dimensional three world, there is a duality. This is why some days you're up, some days you're down, and sometimes you feel almost level to the ground. But get yourself back up again. Get yourself back up and dust yourself off. Because the scripture says a righteous man falls seven times, but he gets right back up again. Hallelujah. I remember my friend told me this a uh, long time ago and stuff. We used to preach on the streets and stuff, and, and he was going through some, some challenges, you know, as we all do and stuff. And, uh, and he had this golf ball. And he says, he says, he says Brother John, Brother John, he's coming like that. He said, I want to be like this. He had the Southern accent, right? He said, I want to be like this golf ball. I said, what do you mean, Brother Larry? What do you mean? And he says, look at this. The harder you throw it down, the higher, the higher it rises. And he says, the harder I fall, I'm going to get back up and rise higher. And I never forgot that analogy that Brother Larry told me. And because it is true. And so when the enemy comes to try to cast you down or life comes and things put you down or people put you down, get right back up and rise higher every time. And so this second watch, that's what it's about. It's about changing the atmosphere in your home, in your job, in your uh, surroundings, in the world and stuff. It's about patrolling the realm of the spirit speaking to the negative things that's there speaking to your bills the things that's written because he says whatever you see i want you to say it watchman so oh my god i looked at my bill here now you know uh, I, i'm i'm kind of i gotta confess you i'm kind of afraid to to look at my my aps my electric bill that's going to be coming up here because we've had like over 30 days of over 110 degrees weather and several of those days were 118 and so that means that the air conditioner the sound that you may hear in the back has to be going oh on all the time and the bill is so high but you know what when i get that bill i'm going to look at it the last one i looked at was almost 300 i'm going i reversed that in the name of yeshua <laughs> You're going to look at it and you're going to call forth whatever it is, whether it's your car, no, whether it's your mortgage, your rent or whatever. You speak to those bills, those those credit cards, that revolving debt that constantly eating up your your resources and stuff. That's why it is important, people, for you to sow seeds, to give so that you will have a continuous harvest, a continuous harvest. OK, and so he says this. Uh, as I said here, uh, let me see here, get back to what I'm saying, getting a little bit too excited. If you have any court judgments or things coming up in court, take that paperwork and speak what you want. Speak what you want. What you see, say it. What you see, not what it says, but what you see. What did God tell Joshua? See, I have given you the city. Joshua chapter six, verse one. He says, you got to see what if you look in the natural, you saw this huge wall all around the city and there are real giants, not metaphor, not not figuratively, but real giants that are there in the city and stuff, the kind that eat people. Yes, the nursery rhymes and stuff that was based on truth. OK, the kind that eat people is in your Bible. They said they're going to we're going to be food for them. And they said, no, no, no. Josh says they're going to be food for us. You know, we they will not eat us. So you get so filled with the Holy Ghost. The devil can't eat you. You have to spit you out. Can you hear what I'm saying? <laughs> I have to spit you out. OK. And so now the story goes on. And so it says, see, I've given you this. And you have to see and then you have to speak what you are seeing there. All right. So you have to reverse the things you have to reverse the curses. If there are word curses that's been launched against you. You have to reverse those curses, reverse those curses. You have it. Whatever he says, whatever you see, I want you to say it now in Matthew chapter 26. I'm not going to read it uh, just for the sake of time here. You find that Jesus is in the garden of Gethsemane. He's just finished uh, the having the, the supper with with his disciples and he's just finished uh you know washing their feet and teaching them about humility and he's talking to them about he's got to go do what he's got to do right and it is at the end it is at the end of the second watch 
coming into the third watch and he releases Judas to go and do what he was going to do and which is going to manifest in the third watch right okay he says go ahead you know and do what you're going to do you're going to sell me out okay and that happened in the third watch which we've talked about right and so but here he is and he's there in the garden he comes to the garden so it is a time the third watch is a place where you come to your place of prayer you come to this garden of Gethsemane what does Gethsemane means it means the oil press the wine press it, it comes uh, you, you deal with those issues that are pressuring you the presses of life because uh, the purpose for the oil press was to get the oil out of the olives and you can't get the oil the anointing out of the oil unless you allow pressure right you can't get the juice out of the grape unless you allow pressure and so this is the place where where you realize and you see the pressures but you're not afraid anymore you know, the scripture says that Yeshua was there and he prayed and prayed till it was like uh, his sweat was like blood coming out of him. He was under so much pressure. So the second watch is the place because you're about to move into some bigger things. You're about to move into some greater things. You're about to fulfill your destiny. So it's about uh, dealing with the pressures of life. And he told them when he came, he says, pray that you don't enter into temptation. Pray that you don't enter. So the second watch is, is praying, lead us not into to temptation okay pray that you don't go into temptation because we all have the temptation there's a lust of the eye the lust of the flesh and the pride of life we all have i don't care if you're apostle prophet evangelist archbishop or arch prophet or whatever you may want to call yourself in this 3d world if you got a flesh body you got the lust of the eye the lust of the flesh and the pride of life and if you don't keep it under subjection control it will ruin your life and it will lead you so he says pray that you don't go into uh, this temptation. And then I'll tell you this uh, as we are just ending this. This is a time, the second watch is for you to invoke the judgments of God. Hmm. Now, this, ain't, this, this is probably not for some of you because you yet have a Sunday school version of the things of God and the things of the spirit. Okay, you yet have this nicety nicety uh, version of the things of God. And I do understand and understand that we are in a place of grace and what Yeshua came. I do understand and understand love and the power of love and all of that. But you know what? I understand how the spirit world works and how spiritual things work. And so in this space here, in the second hour, it is a time to invoke judgments or to reverse, you know, the curses that have been laid against you. Now, Psalms 119 uh, says this. Let, I'm going to quickly read that in verse 62, 61 and 63, maybe. It says, the bands of the wickedness have robbed me, but I have not forgotten the Torah. My God, <laughs> the bands of the wickedness have robbed me, but I have not forgotten the Torah. At midnight, I will rise and give unto thee thanks. See, this is from six, from, from nine o'clock to midnight. Because of thy righteous ordinances, I am a companion of those who reverence thee and of those who keep your precepts. The earth, O Yahweh, is full of your mercy. Teach me your statutes. Wow, that's powerful. I don't have time to really just uh, break that down for you here because I, I just really want to deal with this second watch. There are many, many other things I could tell you about the second watch here. I don't want to get into all of them, but it is a time that you're preparing for visitations. You're preparing for visitations. You might even have visitations from on high because you find that Yeshua in the garden and stuff, as it moved on into the third watch, the angels came to minister him. And so, but he's there in the second watch preparing for that. It's the time where you are letting go of your will, not my will, but thy will be done. It's a time of giving up of having your way and you're allowing the ways of God to manifest in your life. Okay, it's a time of overcoming uh temptation okay lead us not into temptation it's a time of great intercession and as i said it's a time of preparing for uh, angelic visitations that are happening but it is also a time as i said of 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 bringing forth the judgments of god the judgments of god in the earth now uh not everybody may be called to do this at you know at certain times and stuff but i want to tell you that if you study the book of yeshua joshua i believe it's in joshua uh, you find uh, in, in probably also in Deuteronomy when when Moses uh, told him about the people and the tribes when they go into the land there were the twelve tribes right there were six of the tribes that were called to stand upon a certain mountain 
and pronounce blessings. <laughs> but there were six other tribes that were called to stand up on another mountain to pronounce the curses. Lord Jesus. Okay, one day I'll teach you about that. And if you have read my book, Triboscope, you know about that. Because in the book, Triboscope, I tell you, based on your astrological sign, which is attached to the tribes of Israel, for example, me, Scorpio, a Dan Knight. And Dan means judgment. <laughs> okay, and so, and so the tribe of Dan was called to stand and that they were to pronounce the curses upon the enemy, upon the evil ones all around about, whereas some other tribes were announced, were to announce the blessings. So you have the positive and the negative. You have this duality, this divine balance. That's what I've been telling you about. Intercession is about keeping the balance in the cosmos, in this part of the cosmos. And if there are not enough intercessors, okay, people walking in that and knowing who they are, evil, darkness will outweigh the light and corruption will come upon the earth, okay? But if the intercessors arise and begin to pray and begin to seek the face of God, functioning the way that they're supposed to, they will outweigh the darkness and more light will come. And this is where we are now. The scripture says, when your judgments are in the earth, then men will fear you and call upon you, okay? And so uh, when things are happening in the world, it's gonna force people to begin to pray and to look up, as, as Yeshua said in Luke 21, he says, when you see these things happening in the world, he says, don't be afraid, look up and rejoice because your redemption draws nigh. And so where sin abounds, darkness abounds, the grace of God is gonna much more abound until we bring this thing to a point where we get to the singularity where all of the darkness and the evil is swallowed up in light and goodness. Can you hear what I'm saying? It is a, is a very important role that we're playing in this hour. And I'm only just touching on some of the basis of it so that you can understand the importance of your prayers, the importance of functioning as an intercessor and in intercepting the, the works of evil. Now, uh, this part here, it, it kind of, and I'm not going to really go into it a whole lot because I don't want to scare you. And, uh, and I'm going to put this on uh, probably on YouTube, by the way, you know, click like and subscribe, send it to 100 people do all of that okay because people need it look at the others as a part of this part one and part two and and then the third watch and all of them listen to them about 10 15 times and get it within your spirit all right and so but uh, but I'm, I want to just touch on this because uh, when you know who you are as an intercessor especially when you move in the prophetic as an intercessor or the office of a prophet operating it gives you a specific ability and power to do certain things in the world okay it gives you a specific power and ability to do certain things in the world bringing in god's judgments if you will okay because judgment what is it about it's about when uh you go to a court and there is a judge and a judge is going to make a decision he's going to rule on the case so you're bringing in god's rule so look at it that way instead of something negative and stuff and i'm not going to go into a whole lot of detail of it here but you'll find in psalms 109 where David understood this. He was a prophet. He was an intercessor. He was a worshiper also. And he says, hold not your peace. <laughs> Remember Isaiah chapter 62 say that God was going to set watchmen that was not going to be quiet. They were not going to hold their peace. Remember uh, Isaiah uh, 21, it says that uh, it says, uh, I'm going to set, set the watchman on the wall and tell them to declare what they see. OK, hold not thy peace, O, o Elohim of my praise for the mouth of the wicked, the mouth of the deceitful are open against me. Mm, mm, mm. Now, just in case some of you got people working voodoo, who do you do, do do or whatever on you and trying to put some some bad mojo on you, trying to uh, uh, put some bad medicine on you and stuff like that, you have a remedy and your remedy is in this word here. And at a specific time, the heavens are aligned and you can say certain things and do certain things, not only at just this second watch here, but in other times also. But especially during this time, there are certain things that are happening with your body chemistry, 
and with the heavens and stuff that allows you uh, this power to influence things and to reverse things. And matter of fact, if somebody is doing stuff to you, you can say return to the sender. <laughs> now, I know that some of you probably are listening to me and you think that oh, people don't do that. That's, that's just a fable and stuff. You, you have no clue of what goes on in the real world and in, in the spirit world of what is going on day after day, night after night, and the sacrifices and things that are being made that they want you to think that it's just fables, it's legend, it's just stuff you see on TV. This is stuff that is real, that is being done by people in high places and holding political offices, heads of corporations and all other kinds of things and stuff and they use this i mean this is why you see people missing all the time and some of them you will never find because they have been sacrificed unfortunately this is the reason why you see the trafficking of the children and stuff because they want to take these children and use them on for sacrifices or they want to take the adrenochrome chrome off from their adrenalines and stuff to use you know to lengthen their lives and other stuff this is not fable this is not fairy tale what i'm talking about this is truth in the 21st century where people believe in these powers more than the people of the Most High God. And they know how to function in them. And some of them walk around in nice suits and ties, $3,000 suits, $10,000 suits, $1,000 hairstyle, $300, $3,000 shoes, nice outfits, dresses, cost $2,000, amen, $1,000, $2,000 shoes and bags to match and everything and, and with a smile on their face and with the makeup and with the hair and everything and you would never know what they do in the secret places and dark and see because the western minds that want you to think that it's oh it's just these people maybe in africa or in haiti that's doing hoodoo and voodoo and stuff and out there dancing around the fire and you know look like they don't have it no 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 i'm talking about the stuff that is being used every day in your neighborhood in your government like you know and by people that you see on the tv and that's how they got on the tv that's how they uh, uh function and operate in the music industry in all of these things at the level that they do because of what they have done. Now, I'm not saying that all of them. No, I'm not saying all of them. I'm saying that some of them, okay? And so I just want to make it real that when I'm talking about this, I'm not talking about somewhere over in Africa or somewhere over in Haiti or in the First Nations community where the powerful medicine men that know how to do stuff because I've been among them and I know that, right? And so, but I'm talking about people in corporate America, people, the, the politicians and stuff that will get on the TV and that will lie and that will make fun of it and say, oh, oh this person, you know, and they, and, you know, around nine o'clock, uh, 12 o'clock at night and stuff, they're up with their hoods on and not just the boys and the white hoods, but the black hoods, you know, they're there with their hoods on and they got their candles and they're moving around certain altars and they're offering certain things and stuff. And you wonder why this world is so messed up the way it is, because the scripture says it lies in iniquity and that iniquity is this spiritual darkness and the forces. That's why Paul Paul said to them, oh, you foolish Americans, I mean, oh, oh, you foolish Galatians, who had bewitched you? In other words, you're under a spell. People are under a spell and they, they sit there being programmed hour after hour, day after day with the programming of the news on this loop, on this reel, programming the TV shows and these, uh, uh, th these songs, these, uh, what they call these Emmys Awards and stuff where they do all the demonic stuff. They're no longer hiding, they're showing you. And people still like, oh, wasn't that cute? Oh, that's just a metaphor. No, no, it was a real sacrifice. It was a real thing that was being done there. And you were too stupid to know what was really happening and what was happening to you because you were watching it. Don't watch that crap unless you're going to watch it and be rebuking it at the same time. If you're watching it live, whenever I watch that stuff live, I'm... Well, I won't tell you some of the stuff I won't be doing because we're on, we're on YouTube here. But, you know, there, there's stuff you can be doing and people will, you know... They'll fall, they'll mess up, they'll break legs, they'll do all kinds of things and stuff, you know. Their powers just won't work. You, know, you can bind up their familiar spirits, and that's what I'm talking about during this time here. So he says, hold not your peace. For the mouth of the wicked and the mouth of the deceitful are open against me. They have spoken against me with lying tongues. Anybody ever had that? Yeah, 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 and stuff like that. I remember going through things like that, the court situation and stuff. And you know what? I, I released the lying spirit. You know, when people got certain spirits that's controlling them, I'll just just tell you this one of the things that you can do you can intensify that spirit you can empower that spirit to just make them go crazy I'll just tell you this this situation here I, I was in a situation several years ago 
and I had false witnesses come up against me. I couldn't, I had to uh, defend myself, run out of money and everything and, and just, and the Holy Ghost said to me, release a lying spirit. One, but there's already lying, they're already lying. I'm like, oh, I got it, I got it. Ooh, let, let's, let's go lying in overdrive. Let's go lying in overdrive. And God is my witness, I lie not, I tell you the truth. Okay, I released the lying spirit. And there were people that got to understand they was they 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 could not even control themselves with their line and tripping up over each other, you know, just like going against what the other witness had said and just and the the judge himself had to sit back and went. <laughs> it was so much confusion. It was so much confusion. The judge literally, literally. And I was about to bring a rebuttal and the judge said, uh, Mr. Lewis, that's okay. You don't have to say anything else. <laughs> Do you know what I'm talking about? Do you understand? I'm talking about spiritual warfare and the authority that you have as an intercessor. But many times we are afraid and we don't know that we can use certain tools and technology against the enemy, even use the tools that he's got. <laughs> you remember the story in the Bible? In the days of Micah the prophet, the 401st prophet, and they didn't like him because he always told the truth. They didn't like his message because it didn't go along with the, the messages of, of, of the prophets of uh, Baal and Jezebel's prophets and stuff. And they were all prophets. Oh, you're going to win. You're going to win. Go up, go up, go up. They made all kinds of things and horns and everything. Go up, go up, go up. And then, but yeah, they didn't know that Micah, the prophet Micah, because there was 400 of them, and I call him the 401st prophet, he had been in the presence of the Most High, Hashakaya. And so he had heard something, he had heard a rumor. See, you need to hear a holy rumor instead of listening to the gossip of these stupid people and these other people out there and the gossip of the media. So you need to hear a holy rumor. You need to hear beyond the veil of what's going on. You need to be able to hear what is being read on those scrolls that comes out every hour, you know, that is being unrolled and stuff. You need to hear and they have, but and God says, you know, who's going to go down and deceive Ahab for me? Who's going to go down and make him go into battle and one spirit says i'll go lord i'll go lord i'm talking to you about behind the scenes stuff in the heavenly places he said well what you gonna do and i said no 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 not you and then another one goes and says, oh. then another says, okay i will go and i will be a lying spirit in the mouth of his prophets Woo! <laughs> he said you got it dude you gotta go and he was a lying spirit in the mouth of his prophets that was sent by God, sent by God. And so the 401st prophet, Michael, said, you know, you know, no, you know, it's not going to happen that way. Matter of fact, he made fun of him. Go on up, go on up, go on up. And he said, see, I told you he never prophesied any good. He's making fun of me and stuff like that. And Joshua said, well, don't let the king say so. But we want to hear what God really got to say. And so Joshua, come, come on, tell us, uh, Brother Michael, what is it? And he says, you know what? You're going to go up to battle, but I haven't seen you coming back. You will go up, but you will not come back. You will not prevail. He says, lock him up. See, I told you. Still locked up to this day. He was, there was no record of him ever released until he passed away because of the word of the Lord. Do you hear what I'm saying? Activating, activating your angels, activating even the evil angels, if you will. Some of you guys can hear what I'm saying. I know some of you, uh, some of you that are uh, adept at, uh, at intercession can hear what I'm saying. I'm not going to say a whole lot here. No, so he says, they compassed me about also with words of hatred and fought against me with the cause. For my love, this is Psalms 109, for my love, they are my adversaries, and I give my prayer, my intercession to you. And they uh, and they have rewarded me evil for good and hatred for, uh, for love. Set thou a wicked man over him. What? Now, so he is speaking to the powers that be. He is speaking about those that are in authority, that are filled with lying lips and stuff. He says, set a wicked man over them. Let Satan stand at his right hand. Do you realize that you have the power to release Satan against people and against things? Okay. I said, I don't believe that. You need to read the New Testament. <laughs> Paul said this. Paul said that if a person don't repent, after, I'm paraphrasing, after a certain amount of times, so I'm talking about people that were in the church. These Corinthians, you know, that were doing all kinds of stuff, all kinds of immorality. So he says, if, if that, that person don't change after a while, 
you know, they're going to infect all these other people. So let's just turn this one over to Satan. Let his physical body die so his soul can be saved so the other people will not be affected by this. Do you, do you understand the power of that decree, of that declaration? Let the watchmen declare what he sees, okay? Speaking forth the judgments of God in the earth regarding various things. Okay, another illustration. Some of you are here, you know, that before the other pope came on, I released a decree because the spirit said that the pope was going to die. I'm not not die, but 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 that the pope was going to. Uh, how did I say it? There was a phrase that I said it, that, that the pope was going to be removed. He was going to be removed, posted it, you know, months before and it happened. OK, it happened. Then with the queen thing, two months before it happened, I announced within two months. OK, she will be gone. So I'm just showing you the power of decrees and stuff for things. They have rewarded evil for good and hatred for love. Set thou wicked man over him. Let Satan stand in his right. So this second uh, watch is about, you know, making spiritual adjustments, bringing balance here, you know, dealing with the uh, spirit size and dealing with the spiritual realm to bring balance here. OK, and so he says, let Satan stand at his right hand. Uh, when he shall be judged, let him be condemned. Uh, let his prayers become sin. What? So in other words, these people that have, were even praying, he says, don't let their prayers be heard. Don't let their prayers be answered. Now, I'm not telling anybody to do anything, but I'm just showing you that David understood this technology, that there are some people that are very evil and wicked and stuff, and, uh, and, and you have to know when to do what to do and how to do. Because, see, the curse can't come without a cause. In other words, if someone tried to put a curse on you, and it may affect you to, to some degree, but it can't really affect you because, you know, fully because there is no cause. But if there is a cause, okay, it can matter manifest and work in your life okay and especially if you got a lot of fear and other stuff now by the same token if you are reversing or sending returning to the sender or if you are in that prophetic place as a watchman on the wall and standing and looking and reading into the world situations and stuff of leaders and other things and stuff you know you can speak things and you can remove uh things as that was a phrase the pope must go the pope must go okay and so uh you know, so you can do this. And so he goes on. I'm not going to read all of this here. He says, let his days be few and let another one take his office. Let his children be fatherless and his wife become a widow. Let his children be continue, continually wandering and beg. Now, um, you can read the rest of that. My point is this, is that you have to know who you are and you have to know what to do. Because as a watchman, as a mature watchman, I sought for a man. Okay, not just, you know, someone immature, but a man. You have to be able to discern. You can't have these biases and other things like that. And you have to be able to see in the world situation. Okay, you can't have religious biases. You can't have political biases or anything like that. And you are to remove those that need to be removed. You are to set up those that need to be set up. That's how it's really done. Okay, that's why the prophets would go and they would anoint who would be the next king over Israel. They were deposing one king and setting up another one. Can you hear what I'm saying? OK, and that is done uh, by the prophetic anointing, uh, whether it is for uh, government or whether it is for the uh, those corporations or whatever. That same principle is there. OK, I'm not going to deal with that much longer because I can feel some of your spirits here already. Like, you know, just getting a little bit scared. What is he going to say next? Or uh, getting a little bit, you know, <laughs> and stuff. And so but you can read that and you can understand that in the Holy Ghost would begin to give you insight because you are a watcher. This is the second watch of things that will take place. And remember that Luke 10, 19 says, look, I give you power to tread upon serpents and scorpions and nothing, nothing will by any means hurt you. Nothing will hurt you. So the second watch is you are sitting in the atmosphere. You're sitting in the atmosphere. You're releasing the judgments of God, the judgments. And that's not a bad word. The judge sits on a bench because he is going to rule. He's going to make a decision. It's about choices, bringing people to places where they can make the proper choices, right? So, so that's what you said. He says that uh, if you can't judge the things of this world, how can you judge the angelic realm? What? <laughs> the aliens, the angelic. Can you hear what I'm saying? All right, I won't go further into that, but uh, that's the second watch. And there are a lot of other things that has to do with the second watch. 
uh, I don't have time to get into that, but what you can do is, uh, is do a research on your own between um, uh, of what happens in scripture between 9 p.m. and 12 a.m. Because that is like a template of things that can be happening in the spirit that you can implement and function in and function in as a watcher, as a prophetic person, as an intercessor. And again, I'm not telling anybody to do anything, but you have to know who you are. And one of the problems is 21st century Christians don't know who they are. Most of them don't. They allow the enemy to walk all over them, step on them, wipe their feet on them. And they, well, he said to turn the other cheek. How many cheeks you got? These two, the other two, what do you do after that? You know, <laughs> you know there should come a time. There should come a time where you can rely on your spiritual authority to implement things, to change things in your workspace, in your community, in your finances, in your home, in your nation, wherever it is, just use that spiritual authority that you have been given. And that's what this is for. Praise God. I want you guys to remember, if you can, to sow into the ministry information in case you're watching this on YouTube. It's in the description channel. Uh, I didn't post it here in the chat, but you should know it by now uh, what it is, those that want to. But I want to uh, go into a small prayer time here because this is our prayer day. But I felt spirit moving with this um, uh, watches dealing with these eight, you know, uh, uh, powerful, you know, esoteric uh, cardinal watches that he has given us and understanding your times and the seasons. Hallelujah. Do you believe that? Do you believe that? I'm going to just play a little music in the background here, and I want you to, to just pray. I'm going to open up the mic, possibly. Korabasaya esuta karabalalabokoshataya kristo alanamase eredi olabokoshata halala. I'm going to soon open up the uh, mics. Those of you that can, I want you to pray in tongues. So, Rabashete, Elabosha, Karabashanti, Okuria, Sitiki, Alabakoshata, Raka, Stananaya, Shake, Bashate, Mesurian, Dorea, Takarabian, Tolabako, Shatalayan, Dorabako, Shatalabako, Shata, Raka, Sididia, Salabako, Shatalamako, Shata, Raka, Siki, and the Bakaya, Basaya, Nanana, Shata. Now, Father, in the mighty name of Yeshua, I just come before you, everyone that is on this platform here. I thank you, God. We know that in the realm of spirit, there is no time, so we move from linear time that we know of, uh, the time that we're in linearly to just tap into what the second watch would be. And we ask that the Holy Spirit would come in and assist us in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Now, Father, I speak uh, to your people that are on this platform here and those that are uh, listening later. And Father, every spell, every hex, everything that's been devised against them, every weapon that's been formed, Father, we just take the power from it in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Every word curse, every word curse, we tear it up, we destroy it, we burn it up in the mighty name of Jesus. Every altar that's been raised against you, we smash, we tear down in the mighty name of Yeshua, every demonic force that's been released to attach itself to your people on this platform and those that have been listening, that have been sent to harass in their finances, in their physical body, in their careers, in their marriages, God, uh, uh, in their spirituality, God, we command to back off in the mighty name of Yeshua. We intercept every thought, every spell, every negative thing that would be sent that way, and we drive it back in the name of Yeshua. And we reverse that. Everything that has been sent your way to produce poverty, I reverse that, and I command prosperity. As a watchman on the wall, I prophesy prosperity, prosperity, abundance. I prophesy that you would have six to eight streams of income coming in. I prophesy that your mind would be open to see and to know how to function and that the blessings of the most high God would chase after you and that they would overcome you in the name of Yeshua. I prophesy that the favor of God and the favor of man will be upon your life now in the mighty name of Jesus. I just root 
root out every every uh, uh, pro poverty consciousness that is there, every seed that may have been planted even as a child. I root it out in the mighty name of Yeshua and command you to prosper, command you to prosper. I command you to receive a harvest on every seed, every seed that you planted, every tithe or whatever. I command a continuous harvest as you continue to sow in the mighty name of Yeshua. And we reverse everything. We reverse everything. Father, those that are in positions, that are in jobs where they need to be doing something else, I thank you, God, that you will bring a closure to that and open up something new and that you will cause the transition to be smooth in the mighty name of Yeshua. I thank you for those that are waiting on contracts, God, uh, for, uh, for the next assignment. I release those contracts now in the mighty name of Yeshua. And we thank you for it. And everyone that would seek to hinder those things, especially using magic or the dark arts, God, we bind up now and we command them to fail. I bind up every familiar spirit that would be sent to spy in the mighty name of Yeshua. We blind them. They cannot see. We cover their ears. They cannot hear in the mighty name of Yeshua. We cover their mouth. They cannot speak to their conjurers in the mighty name of Yeshua. And so we thank you for it and we praise you, God. Father, I speak to every uh, uh, challenge and every negative thing, spirit that's been sent uh, to come against the physical health of your people that are on this platform, whether it came through food that was eaten, that had been enchanted, or whether it was sent through any other way or spirit or whatever, God, we bind up in the mighty name of Yeshua and we come in all the poisons and all the negative stuff that will cause disease to come up out of the body in the mighty name of Yeshua. And we release healing and health and hope wholeness in the mighty name of Jesus. Those that have been re, uh, received an assignment in their minds, God, the things that have been sent to take away their mind and their thinking and confusion and to drive them out of their mind. I reverse that as a watchman on the wall and I say that you have the mind of Christ. You have the mind of Christ. You have the mind of Christ. Hallelujah. And let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. And we thank you for it, Father. Every assignment, God, that's been sent against marriages and relationships, God, to destroy and to bring disruption. God, we tear up now in the name of Yeshua. We command to go back in the mighty name of Yeshua. Every spiritual husband, spiritual wife, we bind up now in the mighty name of Yeshua. Every marine spirit, spirits of the air, spirits of the earth, and those that would come uh, to uh, to intimidate, and those that would come to uh, just uh, to to uh, frustrate, and those that would come in between relationships. God, Father, I speak, God, those that are in our lives, in and around us, God, uh, that may be of appearing as a friend, but have their eyes on uh, uh, our spouses or those of, that you've assigned to us, let them be removed in the mighty name of Yeshua. Let them be removed. Every false friend that would seek to come in and to destroy relationship, let them be removed. Let them be uncovered in the mighty name of Jesus. Let them be removed. Let them be uncovered in the mighty name of Yeshua. Now, Father, every uh, person that has had an assignment uh, uh, launched against them that there will be no happiness, that there be no marriages uh, that will last in their family. We reverse that now in the mighty name of Yeshua. We break that curse and we command it to fall and break like glass, to fall and break like glass. And I thank you that you will send, God, those that you've assigned, the husbands, the wives that you've assigned. I thank you for the families, God, those that have uh, been cursed or word cursed or genetically where they're not able to have children. I speak now into the female's body, into the fallopian tubes, into the womb, the uterus, and I I command fire roars to cease in the mighty name of Jesus. I command you to ovulate. I command your body to conceive in the mighty name of Yeshua. I speak into the men's bodies, God, that may have low sperm counts or other things. I command everything to function, be fruitful and multiply in the mighty name of Yeshua. And I command you to have children of the most high God that will be children of the kingdom of God. In the mighty name of Yeshua. And it's so, and it can't be otherwise. I thank you for that. Praise you, God. On every level, God, that a curse has been come. Those that have uh, received uh, things, God, to keep them out of ministry and things to distract them that the enemy uses and brings from time to time when they are becoming more spiritual, more in tune, God. Let those things, God, fall. Let those things, God, uh, just be removed so that your people can be focused on you in the mighty name of Yeshua. Hallelujah. We thank you for it. I thank you for every family, every child, every grandchild 
and all of those in the mighty name of Yeshua that's a part of this platform here. We reverse it as we send in the second watch. Hey, hey, Sakenino Shatara Malay, Ambabaluko Shatala, Rabo Shate, in the Nonoko Sakaya Basate. In the mighty name of Jesus, and it's so, and so, and so, and it can't be otherwise. I'm going to just open up those of you that uh, 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 can open up your mics. I want you to pray in the spirit, pray in tongues if you can, or just begin to just pray. <speaking in Hebrew> Oh, <laughs> Yana <laughs> 
In the mighty name of Yeshua, and it's so. We speak destruction upon the destroyer in the mighty name of Yeshua. We speak terror upon the terrorizer in the mighty name of Yeshua. Those that would come to divide, I speak division upon them in the mighty name of Yeshua. We speak fear upon that which would bring fear in the mighty name of Yeshua. We reverse everything, hallelujah, that's been launched in our ways. We are free in Jesus' name and it's so. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Father, we pray at this time also. As kids are